Suspense. Autolite and its 96,000 dealers present Mr. Mickey Rooney in For Love or Murder, a suspense play produced and edited by William Spear. Wilcox! Hello, Wilcox! Right here. Say, aren't you Remingchester Shotgun, the big game hunter? I am. Wilcox, someone said you could help me. Well, what are you hunting? Uh, a battery. From a car. Well, your safari's over. Just shoot down to your Autolite dealer and get an Autolite Stay Full battery. The battery that needs water only three times a year in normal car use. Capital. I shan't have to scout for water holes anymore. Right you are. And your Autolite Stay Full battery has a fiberglass retaining mat, protecting every positive plate to lengthen battery life. Why, in recent tests, based on SAE life cycle standards, Autolite stay-full batteries gave 70% longer average life than batteries without stay-full features. Get an Autolite stay-full battery, the battery that needs water only three times a year in normal car use. Remember, you're always right with Autolite. And now with For Love or Murder, and with the performance of Mickey Rooney, Autolite hopes once again to keep you in... Suspense! Nothing could have stopped me. Nothing on earth could have stopped me. There were drums beating in my head as I left the taxi and started down 55th Street. The moon was high over Jersey, staring. There was no one outside the building, no one near it at all. I walked slowly toward the service entrance and into the cellar. I knew where the back stairs were. We'd rehearsed the whole thing on paper a hundred times, more than a hundred times. It wasn't something you blundered into. Anne had taught me that. It wasn't something you did on the spur of the moment. Murder had to be a calm, organized thing. Murder had to be planned. If anyone saw me going up the back stairs, it might cause a little fuss. But if I were calm, if I were organized, if I moved slowly and acted as though nothing was wrong, they'd pass and ignore me. I was just an eccentric fellow who'd rather walk upstairs than ride elevators. New York was full of such people. But no one saw me. All the way up to the fourth floor, no one saw me. Then I stepped out onto the landing. I waited an hour, or ten seconds, or ten years. Time meant nothing. I wasn't aware of it passing. I slid the gun into my hand. It felt as hot and heavy as death itself. Oh, you're late. You're a few minutes late. I thought you weren't coming. Where is he? In there. In there. Who is it, Ann? Who is it? Do it quickly, darling. Do it fast. Yeah, yeah. Who is it, Ann? Um. Who is it? Uh. Who are you? What do you want? The fat little man who was about to die looked at me, at my face, at my neck, and then his eyes fluttered down into the gun that I hung say, there. I didn't say, uh, I did... He looked like a little fish. Like a helpless, harmless, scared fish, and the drums in my head beat louder, and wheels turned, and lights flashed, and the fat little man melted toward me. No, I say. I say. No. No. I hit him. No. I hit him. No. I hit him. I hit him. Wait. Wait, Tom. Huh? Wait. I... No, wait. He's dead. He must be dead after that. Oh, he'd only fought back or something. He he just took it. Now he's dead. He's dead. Huh? Now, dear. Huh? Me. Huh? You've got to hit me. I I didn't think it'd be like this, Ann. How'd you think it'd be? A tea party? So awful dirty and... What's the matter with you, I Tommy? I didn't think it'd be like this, you Ann. You can't weaken now, Tommy. No. Take the gun. Yeah. Now, the rest. Do you remember the rest of it? The uh, other things you've got to do? Yes, I, I remember. Hit me hard. You've got to hit me hard. Hit you hard. You've got to be marks. It mustn't look like I framed this. Now, it must be hard. Yeah. And then the jewelry and stuff. The jewelry and I stuff? I piled them up on the dresser. Oh, and his wallet. Here, take it. It must look good, darling. It must look good. Yeah, yeah. And muss up the room. Now, you remember? Yeah, I, I remember, I remember. All right, now, quickly. Hit me. Hit me. I love you, Ann. I must love you very hit much. Me. Hit me! Hit me! She 
fell, but she didn't just fall down. She fell into a graceful little ball. Even unconscious, she seemed in perfect control of things. Room, room had to be ripped up. Ripped up. The room had to be ripped. A glass. <laughs> Took the stuff she had piled up on the dresser. Bracelets, rings, pins. I stuffed his wallet into my pocket. Uh, then I got out. I got out as fast as I could. The way was clear all the way down, just the cellar. That was all that was left. One fast. Oh! Whoever it was came straight toward me, saw me. There was no hiding. And he was between me and the street. He shoveled toward me. I lifted the gun. Just a second, young fella. Let me get a I swung hard and I spun back into the row of cans. I waited a moment. And then... The street was still empty when I, I came out and I, I felt like running along it. I almost ran along it. Ah, the night was cool. The air was, the air felt good. I, I walked away. I, I walked a ways uh, and I thought, I thought about love. About me being in love. What kind of love was this? What kind of love was it that made a guy behave like this? What kind of love was it that caused people to be hurt, people to be killed? What kind of love was it? I walked up. I walked. Finally, I, 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 looked, I looked at my watch. T ten minutes. The whole thing had taken just ten minutes. What was the rest of it? Yeah, I had to get back to the club before it was time for me to go on again. Before it was time for me to seat myself at the piano in the lounge and soothe away the cares of tired, sophisticated New Yorkers. <laughs> I had to get back quickly. No one saw me. The back way... I used the back way, the same one I'd left by. Yeah, yeah that, that was my life from now on, maybe. The back way, sneak in, sneak out. It'd be hard to break myself of the habit after tonight. But it was cheap. A cheap price to pay for Anne. Any price really was cheap to pay for Anne. That's all I had to ever remember. <sighs> was in my little dressing room for two or three minutes. Had a... Chance even to wash my face. Almost twelve fifteen, Tommy. Uh, you awake? Uh, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll be with you in a minute. Okay, Tommy. The wallets, the bracelets, the junk. I'd forgotten to ditch them, get rid of them first thing Anna told me, and I'd forgotten. I didn't want them around. They might make trouble hanging around. Hello, uh, Tommy. Uh, How's the boy Rachmaninoff? Huh? Uh, are you, Jimmy? Have your nap. All set to go? Yeah, I uh, sl slept a little. I'll, uh, I'll, be, I'll be right back, kid. Sure, kid, sure. Hello there, Mr. Lee. Uh, hiya, Frank. I uh, thought I'd get a little air. Yes, uh, <laughs> nothing like it. One thing about being a doorman, I don't make much money, but I get an awful lot of fresh air. Fresh as you can... Get in New York anyway, huh? Right you are, Mr. Lee. <laughs> Gonna take a little walk. You certainly hit it right that time. Fresh as you can get in New York. <laughs> the moon was still high over Jersey. Staring. Sewer. That was the best spot. Just throw them in and let the East River take care of them. I had the wallet in my What's hand when I... What's Tommy? <laughs> you look like you're in love. Huh. Oh, oh, off, officer, I, I didn't see you. Just... Officer, is it? Yeah. You're getting awful formal. Kind of jumpy, ain't you? No, 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 Dan. Dan, it's... 
It's just that you you startled me, that's all. Startled you, did I? I was just standing there, and you walked within two inches of me and didn't see me. It's you're in love. I know the symptoms. You're in love. <laughs> <laughs> love. Yeah, maybe you're right, Dan. Uh, it's a great feeling, lad. And dangerous. If you need someone to help you find your way back to the club, just tell me. In your condition, no telling where you'll walk. <laughs> yeah. I'll wait until his footsteps died out, and then... You know, the sewer... So we're fast. And to get... Ah, back so soon, Mr. Lee? Gotta go to work, gotta... Uh, whoa, whoa, what's that? Ah... Now, there's boys with something on their minds. Y- yeah. Uh, gone down 55th, looks like, from here. <laughs> Somebody's in for it. I gotta hey, be getting... the customers are screaming for you. Come on, come on. I wasn't afraid. I wasn't nervous. The cops would be talking to Ann now. If she made a slip, the two of us would be dead, as dead as you could get. <laughs> but I knew she wouldn't make any slips. She'd be too smart for him. We'd plan too well for him. It was all so simple. They couldn't make anything out of it. A crook slipped into her apartment, killed her husband. Her rich, fat, tired, helpless husband. And slugged her. That was all there was to it. Happens in New York. Happens a lot in New York. <laughs> Could she help it if the whole thing made her a rich woman? Could she help it if a housebreaker freed her from her husband so she could marry someone else? Could she help that? <laughs> Setup was so perfect. What could go wrong? So I sat and played Chopin, Strauss, Gershwin, Berlin. I sat and played the music of kind and great and gentle men. And I tried to keep that thing on the floor out of my mind. I tried to keep that out of my mind. Thank you. Hey, Tommy. Yeah? Yeah. You know that dame that used to come in here, that um, Ann Thomas? I don't oh, think I... Oh, you remember the one? The brunette. The cute one used to have a crush on you. Lives on 55th Street. Ann Thomas? Yeah. I remember. What? A uh, fuss down her house tonight. Somebody broke in and messed things up. Killed her husband. Banged her around. Dan Ryan was telling me. It's too bad. Yeah. You're never safe in these big towns, are you? Never safe anywhere. You were safe if you were smart. You were safe if you had someone like Anne to think things out for you. You were safe if you had her to look forward to, to depend on. I was safe. That was all that mattered, really. I was safe. It was childish to worry about guys like like Anne's husband. It was silly to get squeamish over a little blood. People died every minute in New York. They were useless, and they were in the way, and they died. What did it matter whether it was murder or something else? People died. Sure, sure, that's... That's, that's what Anne would have said. That's what Anne would have told me. And that was the right way to look at it. That was the right way.
Autolite is bringing you Mr. Mickey Rooney in For Love or Murder, tonight's production in radio's outstanding theater of thrills, Suspense. Yes, we'll call five bag baboons from Bogota, trapped tigers in Tasmania, snared sparrows in Schenectady. <laughs> Got them all stuffed and mounted, too. Say, that reminds me. Let me show you my Autolite Stay Full battery trophies. You mean you battled beasts with a battery? Why, sure. Take this camel, for instance. You know how I got him? I just told him about Autolite Stay Full batteries, extra liquid reserve above the plates. Needs water only three times a year in normal car use, I said. Well, sir, the dreary dromedary died of mortification. Remarkable. Hmm? See this rabbit? Ran himself ragged, the upstart, trying to outstart an Autolite stay full battery. Incredible. But what about that rather moth eaten elephant head? Oh, he died of old age, trying to outlive an Autolite stay full battery. You know, Autolite stay full batteries with extra liquid reserve above the plates and fiberglass retaining mats at every positive plate give 70% longer average life than batteries without stay full features. This is based on recent tests. Conducted according to SAE life cycle standards. So see your Autolite dealer, friends, for a power-packed, long life. Autolite Stay Full battery. Remember, you're always right with Autolite. And now, Autolite brings back to our Hollywood soundstage our star Mickey Rooney with Loreen Tuttle in For Love or Murder, a tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. The night went fast. People came, people went. Stood in front of the piano. They smiled, frowned. Once in a while, someone requested a number. Once in a while, someone applauded. It was a night like any other night. Hey, you gonna play till Christmas, Tommy? Uh, uh, what time is it? Almost three. Oh. You sure can't tickle those keys, Tommy. Uh. You must have a beautiful soul. Well, what's the matter? Shut up. What? I said shut up! Well, I didn't mean to say anything wrong, Tommy. What did I say? Shut up! Shut up! Talk to yourself all night, build yourself up, tell yourself things were all right and you were a great guy. Smart guy. One stupid remark mixed you all up again. One stupid remark made you see blood again. Made you feel like garbage. <laughs> one, one stupid remark. Beautiful soul. My soul. So what? The apartment was like a big, bare, ugly cave. I tried to sleep. Uh, I got up and tried to read. Uh, words danced in front of me like they'd been hung on rubber bands. Nerves, nerves, nerves. It's just nerves. Anne could have talked me out of them in a minute. All I had to do was get some sleep or talk to Anne. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. All night, not a word. That's that's why I was jumpy. Suppose she was in trouble. Suppose something had gone wrong. Suppose somewhere we'd slip. Operator, give me... No. If the wires were tapped, no, I wouldn't do the call. But if I went to the apartment the way I went last night, no one would see me. The police wouldn't expect that. That's the last thing they'd expect. I had to touch her. I needed her strength. I needed her to tell me things were all right. I had to see her. I had to see her. I could get in and out again. No one would be the wiser. Four in the morning, the street was empty. The cellar was colder than it had been. The stairs were lighted. A thin red bulb at each landing. I didn't remember that. Finally. Who's there? It's me. It's Tom. Tom, no. Let me in. 
But he shouldn't have come. Suppose they're watching. You think they're watching? I don't know. You know what I told you. Yeah, but I... You know what we planned? You weren't to get in touch with me for days. For days. I know, but I had to see you, baby. Please, let me... Now, stop it. He shouldn't have come. Just a moment. I love you so, honey. I had to be with you. No, no, no. I had to be with you, baby. You're really a sweet boy, Tom. And you're not angry with me, honey. Did anyone see you? No, no, I'm, I'm sure, but I, I was careful. Let me, let me kiss you. <laughs> I feel strong again. I feel strong. I could do anything now. I was kind of mixed up tonight, but I'm all right now. I, fe- I feel good now. A sweet boy. You worried? Huh? Why? Didn't we plan? Didn't we plan good enough to fool anybody? Why were you worried? I don't know. I don't know. Well, the police believe me. I knew they would. You sure they did? Well, of course I'm sure. They were sympathetic and kindly. They were nice. But suppose they were only pretending. Sometimes you know they pretend. Oh, but... when men are acting with me, I oh, know it. Oh, baby, come here. You're wonderful. Ain't no reason in the world to think this is any different than a thousand other robberies. I told you that. I told you that from the beginning. Yeah. We'll be happy now, huh? Won't we? Won't we be be happy together now? Tell me that, yeah. baby. We'll be happy. Won't yeah, we, we'll huh? be happy huh? now. You're a wild boy. I love you, baby. I love you. Aren't you a little sorry about the janitor? Janitor? What about the janitor? Um. What about the janitor? See the man I met in the cellar? What about him? He's dead. What? You fractured his skull. No, no. I, I said you were a wild boy. Never, never meant that. I, I didn't know I hit him so hard. I like you because you're he such turned a wild me. boy. I didn't mean to kill a man. I'm sorry I told you. You're going to worry about him all night. Annie, I didn't mean <laughs> well, to kill I'll be careful him. next time when I tell you. <sighs> I wish I had a piano so you could play for me. I like to hear you play, Tommy. Hey. Who? Be, be careful, baby. Of what? It's only the phone. Careful, honey. Yes? What? What? You've got the wrong number. Wrong number. Silly what do, guy. What do you want, honey? I don't know. Just the wrong number. You want a drink, Tommy? No, no, You mind no. if I make one for myself? Well, go ahead, honey. You no. know, you hit me awful hard last night. Look at the lump there. Look at yeah, it. Yeah, I didn't want to hit you, you that hard. You made it look good. You made it look awful good. I... Oh, huh? for pity. Careful, baby. Yes. Oh, oh, it's you again. You've got the wrong number. The wrong number. The way people annoy you. Annie. Yeah, Tommy? Annie. That janitor. Who? Who was he? Who was I don't know. Just a janitor, that's all. Did he have any kids? Two or three, yeah, I think so. Why? You want to get some ice? I, I don't know why I wanted to know. I just, I'm coming. I'll, I'll get, get it. it. I'll take it. I'll tell no, the guy. No, Tommy, I'll, I'll get it. No, Thank you, Ann. Okay, this is the last time. I love that wrong number routine. Who have you got up there? The young jerk who rubbed your husband out for you? Huh? You're a Lulu, honey. Get rid of him as soon as you can. And I don't want him hanging around after we're married, you know. That you, Ann? Why don't you say something? Why don't you... Tommy. I sat down in the bed and I felt very calm and very organized. And I heard the drums start thumping in my brain. But delicate and far off. This time they had a sad, lost beat. Was it, Tommy? Was it that same silly guy? The janitor has three kids, huh? Who's going to feed them? Annie, who's going to love them? What's the matter with you, Tom? Oh, Tom, come here. Let's sit down. What have you got on me, anyway? What is there about you? Tom. You're bad for me, Ann. Awful bad for me. You could make all kinds of a sucker out of me. You could turn my stomach in 50 different directions a minute. And I'd still go on loving you. Why? I don't like it when you talk like that. I don't like it. Why would I love you? Ah, you're tired. Come on, sit down here by me. Don't touch me! Tom, what? What is it, that phone call? That's a gag. That's someone playing a joke. I was a patsy, huh? All that horror and all that fright. I got... Black with two good men's blood helping you and that guy on the phone. Tom! Tom, put that gun away. Now listen, I'll explain, Tom. Let me talk. You think I like to do those things, Ann? Tom, now listen. I killed two men to get you, Ann. But I haven't got you. No. 
He's got you. The guy on the boat's no, got you. No, Tom, no, he I hasn't. I and I did. I bought you. That's not fair. By rights, you should be mine. You're not mine, no, are Tom. you? No, it was always you. You're his. I give him up. I was only kidding him, only stringing him along. I wasted the it whole was night, you, I wasted Tommy. all that blood on him. No, Wasted Tom, two please. guys and three kids. No. It's got to end, then. Tom, no, no. It's like got to end. No. Oh, it can't no, be love, no. can it? It couldn't have ever been love. Love doesn't hurt like this. Does it, Ann? Does it? What's going on in there? What's going on in there? Wasn't neat enough. <laughs> Just fell in a silly little lump and lay quiet. Hey, in there! Hey, open up! What's going on in there? What's going on? I shall walk down a corridor the night of December 10th. And I shall die. It's not important. They've let me play the piano here. I've even composed some stuff, short pieces. I always wanted to compose, but I never had the time for it. Maybe someday somebody important will play my stuff. Maybe someday you'll hear some of it. Funnier things have happened. There are even people who get away with murder. Hey, tell me. I think a lot about Anne. (laughs) Poor Anne. She should have picked someone older than me. Someone solid and stable and wise. Someone with a stronger stomach. Uh, not a musician. Uh, not a musician. Suspense presented by Autolite. Tonight's star, Mickey Rooney with Loreen Tuttle. I like your trophies, Harlow. Ah, uh, you'll like your Autolite Stay Full battery even more, Reming Chester. It's just one of more than 400 products made by Autolite for cars, trucks, planes, and boats in 28 plants coast to coast. These include complete electrical systems for many makes of America's finest cars, batteries, spark plugs, generators, coils, distributors, starting motors, and Autolite bullseye headlights. All engineered to fit together perfectly, work together perfectly, because they're a perfect team. So don't accept electrical parts supposed to be as good. Demand and get Autolite, original factory parts at your neighborhood service station, car dealer, garage, or repair shop. Remember, you're always right with Autolite. Next Thursday for Suspense, Lana Turner will be our star. The play is called The Flame Blue Glove, and it is, as we say... A tale well calculated to keep you in... Suspense. Tonight's Suspense play was produced and edited by William Spear and directed by Norman MacDonald. Music for Suspense is composed by Lucian Morawieck and conducted by Lud Gluskin. The second prelude by George Gershwin was used as thematic material. For Love or Murder is an original radio play by John Shaw. Mickey Rooney appeared by arrangement with Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer, producers of Battleground, starring Van Johnson, John Hodiak, Ricardo Montalban, and George Murphy. In the coming weeks, you will hear such stars as Eddie Cantor, Ida Lupino, and Daddy Kay. Don't forget, next Thursday, same time, Autolite will present Suspense, starring Lana Turner. You can buy Autolite Stayful batteries, Autolite resistor or regular spark plugs, Autolite electrical parts at your neighborhood Autolite dealers. Switch to Autolite. Good night. Join the fight against tuberculosis. Through your purchase of Christmas seals in 1948, there were fewer deaths from TB than ever before. The 1949 National Tuberculosis Christmas Seal Sale is on now. Do your part. Buy Christmas Seals. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.